Crashing motorbikes. It's the elephant in the room, isn't it? It's the one thing that no biker likes talking about. Absolutely, yes. It's something we spend most of our lives learning not to do. We go to ride a train in places to learn how to ride better and not crash. We ensure ourselves in case of a crash, but not many people go and do it on purpose. No, but the unfortunate reality is, eventually, most of us are going to end up tipping off at some point. Yeah. I reckon most of us are going to have a drop in our life at some point. I think, yeah. you know, different riders are definitely, everyone's got that one mate who's had eight crashes and it's a ticking clock until he does it again. And most of us are a little bit more careful than that. But sooner or later, unfortunately, yeah, your bike will end up on the floor one way or another. And that's exactly what we're here today to talk about. This bike that we're leaning up against is going to end up on the floor on purpose today. Definitely, yeah. So we're here with uh, the cams and RNG racing. And what we're going to do is we've taken this Beautiful spanking new Yamaha MT10. We've put all of RNG Racing's latest kit on it and we're going to crash it. See how the kit performs, see how the bike is protected by RNG's components. And there's a, there's a caveat that we need to make sure that we've said at least once, which is professional rider, not riders. There's only Chris riding today. I you dodged a bullet. We. <laughs> I dodged a bullet. Professional rider, very much a closed road. Uh, we've done a safety brief. We've done some kind of risk assessment. We know exactly what we're doing. We have been here and done this before, years and years ago. Don't try this at home. Right, Chris, you go and put some kit on. I'm going to talk to the guy that owns the bike and the guy that's fitted the kit to the bike. Tell them I'm sorry. So while Chris is away getting kitted up, I thought it'd be a good chance to have a chat with Alan Garrett, who's the UK sales manager for RNG. Alan, thanks for um, offering your bike as a victim. Maybe we should talk about a little bit of the company history first. It's actually the 20th anniversary of RNG this year. Um, we've come a long way from the start, from the very first time when the crash bungs on the, that you're familiar with on the side of the bike were produced, developed into many products now, complete protection for the bike. And projects like this are really important for us to get product feedback and development yep. so we can put that into the next generation of protection. So I guess today is, is doing two, two jobs for you really. It's A, it's giving us a chance to show our viewers and the wider audience something that they don't get to see every day, a bike being crashed on purpose, but there's a good chance that there'll be some feedback that you might be able to take from some of the parts that are fitted to this bike that, that may or may not have an impact on what RG stuff looks like in the future. That's correct. I mean, you know, two of the areas we get feedback from is directly from the road user, but also from our racing activities at the British Superbikes. And get a product that needs improvement we will look at trying to test it and then bringing it into production in due course. Okay so obviously me not being a racer I have a completely different kind of mindset when it comes to crashing I can see curbs, car, road furniture that, that your average racer and every racetrack in the land just doesn't have. Furniture as you mentioned is is, is always going to be a problem. Yep. Um, we can't provide a hundred percent yeah. situation to protect from crashing no. but what we can do is damage limitation yep. making sure that the expensive parts are protected um, somebody can pick the bike up and carry on a commute to work yep. um, they can carry on finish their holiday off if you know they're on a tour and something's happened mm -hmm. um, and the road rider is the, is the absolute paramount really yep. for us at all. which is why we're using a, a, a road orientated bike today the MT10 it's, it's in my opinion it's one of the best street bikes that you can possibly buy I'm amazed that McCams have loaned us one of these and not something that's 20 years old out the back of the cupboard so let's maybe talk about what you've done and what we fitted to this bike yesterday in the workshop in particular that we're going to be um, assessing today so this is the complete street package that has been fitted to the motorcycle um, from the frame protectors to the engine case covers fork protectors at the front end spindle slider and cotton reels at the back and then we've also put a few styling accessories into it as well such as the tail tide and the frame inserts so you're you're happy for us to do exactly what we're about to do which is we're going to simulate well we're not going to simulate anything we're going to do 30 miles an hour on the bike We've removed the ABS fuse from this bike, so we're going to lock the back brake up. We're going to lay it down in the dry, haven't even swept the surface. It's about as real a, a condition as you could possibly get. And then we're going to take a look and see what, what, what's gone on. Yeah, we'll do, let's go for it. Okay. We should set the scene and talk about who McCams are. That big logo at the side of the bike. They're not just a BSB sponsor. McCams are the kind of do-it-all guys that take over what happens to your bike if you've had a non-fault accident? This is Darren McCann, not McCam. He's the regional sales manager for McCams. That's correct. Darren, I think I should be thanking you for loaning us the bike. 
But more importantly, I think we should skip over the fact that we're about to crash your lovely MT10 and talk about what it is that McCams do as a business. So you and I have already had a bit of a chat about this. I didn't really know what you do. And I think the easiest way for me to describe it is you're the, the intermediary that deals with insurance companies and third parties. Is that right? That's correct, yeah. I mean, in the unfortunate event that someone has a non-fault accident, which can be a very stressful situation for anyone, I'm sure you've been involved in one yourself. A couple. Yes, yeah, so we've all been involved in a few. But we would take over and act as kind of the middleman to take away any of the, the painful side of dealing with an insurance company. We would take over, we would um, make sure that they're back on two wheels, preferably within 24 hours, although we're, we're working to bring that forward a bit. So McCams isn't a paid for subscription service. The qualifying criteria is quite simply a non-fault accident. That's correct. If I've had a non-fault accident, I've got broken bones, broken kit, and a broken bike. Where, how do I find you? What do I do? Well, the beauty of the service that we offer is that we're not fully affiliated towards any dealership. Any dealership can use us, any repair centre. So my, so, so my local trusted guy who I always use to service my bike, he's the man that I want to send my bike to. You're not going to tell me if I ring you up that I've got to send it to that dealership 200 miles away. Or no, exactly. That's the beauty of, of coming through us. You can have your bike repaired recovered by the guys that you trust and you can use anyone that you like. So just to summarise then before Chris jumps on the bike, nobody likes talking about crashing bikes. It's the one thing that bikers in general will try not to touch on whether you're on your own, online, you know, on social media. Crashing just gets pushed to the back of the queue. We're here today to try and, and remind people that there are products that you can buy that will help your bike once it's had a crash and there are people that you can deal with that will uh, lessen the pain, numb the pain of having a crash. Hello, mate. You riding in that, are you? Uh, I'll just go and put my kit on. You're a bit underdressed. I'll join you in a minute. <laughs> Off you go. So, John's wearing a puffer jacket and jeans. I've got my trusty showy helmet. Um, I, I thought about bringing an old helmet because I might crash, and then I thought, there's no logic in that. So, new helmet, got to look after your head. I've got a set of Nox Handroids. These are a couple of models old, but they're a good good faithful glove really safe for your hands one thing i'm quite squeamish about is hurting my hands so gonna get my hands in a set of them i've got a set of leathers that john's just told me i look like a french supermotor racer in they are not the cleanest leathers but they're a trusty old set of danies laguna sakers i trust them i've crashed them before they're a good good bit of kit and then underneath the leathers i've got the nox track vest so it's got a back protector chest protector hip protection all integrated into it and finally a set of part worn TCX boots to keep the tootsies safe. How are you feeling? It's an odd thing, yeah. I, I've done this a few times now, crashing on purpose, and you definitely spend a bit longer putting your boots on. You check your zips three or four more times and do the gloves a little bit more times. I'm not as nervous as I was the first time I did this. The first time I did this this manoeuvre, it's called a back brake lay down yep. manoeuvre. Um, I was pretty nervous, I'd never done it before. I spoke to some professionals who had done it, who do it for a living. Um, so they gave me a bit of confidence. Yeah, now I'm that guy, hopefully. I've done, done three of these maneuvers before in different conditions, different services, different speeds. So I know what's gonna happen. I know how the bike's gonna go. Unfortunately, I also know that there's no, there's no crashing without a little bit of pain. So there, there's gonna be bumps and bruises as an end of it. This is no different to doing a wheelie, doing a knee down. Yeah, yeah. It's you know, a technique, something It's a find. technique, I'm just going to do a thing. Just the thing ends with me on I'm my really backside. <laughs> you're doing the thing, mate. On you go. <laughs> right, let's stop talking about crashing and see some crashing. Time has come. Right, you got this, mate. Be safe. I know this is controlled, and, uh, and Chris is without doubt one of the best and most accurate riders I've ever worked with. MotoGP guys, World Superbike champions. Chris has got the skills to pay the bills, but there's always a worry, because he's a mate of mine, that he's gonna hurt himself. Let's take a look, see what happens. Never bad <laughs> Well, it went exactly where we thought it was going to go. It's exactly where I said it had land. So ignition off, first of all. There we go. A crashed bike. A crashed motorcycle. And a, and a crashed but perfectly okay Chris. Perfectly okay. A little impact on the side there as it hit the floor. On your hip? Ribs, actually. But nice and steady. Protective kit did its job. Crash mushrooms have done their job. Straight away we can see 
no no lubricants yep. no fluids sticking out of the bike okay which is a good sign yep that's a good start i'm gonna say due to the lack of fluid on the floor down there it's held up pretty well alan come and have a look at this with us come on in alan this was uh, so so let's get this straight before we go into it who's paying the bill for any damaged parts on the bike rng that is you <laughs> yeah not <laughs> you is, mate not you that is you so let's have a little look through here starting from the back the cotton reel and the swing arm protector cotton reel still functioning but it's completely protected the back end there and then as you come back down um you lost your little gear peg, but you'd be able to get something in there temporarily, so you got it repaired. Engine case cover, no fluid loss in there at all. And the crash protector, the front end's done a really good job there. You've got no damage to the side of the bike. This one hasn't even touched down. Front, front forks haven't gone down. A little bit on the on there. But that's done its job in as much as... Still operate the clutch, so if you're on your way to work, you know, temporary repair just on that, and you're away. So Chris, you are actually happy, as usual. <laughs> Everything still works? Yeah, the limbs all still work, yeah, absolutely. Again, we used a controlled method to, to crash the bike, but it simulates perfectly a, a 30 mile an hour low side crash. Exactly, exactly the kind of crash that a guy probably would have on his way to work without realizing he's about to have it. That unknown snap, you're on the floor crash. Exactly that one, yeah. Bike goes down very quickly. Again, you quite often see the bike slides a long way, even from 30 mile an hour. It's a lot of energy there. Yeah. The bike slides a long way on its side. Incredibly. You can't talking, make this up. This, this yeah. kit for 250 pounds has done exactly what it says on the tin. When you look at the damage on the bike, we're talking a scuff on the clutch lever and a broken gear lever, but just the stub. Yeah, that for me is really impressive. You'd quite happily click that into second, third gear, and that's the only difference to your ride after the crash compared to your ride before the crash. You can get home, you've got a tiny repair bill, chalk that one up to experience. So if we're going to put a price on, peace of mind, what price, peace of mind, funny old thing, it is approximately 250 quid. 250 quid, you're going to pick it up and ride it home. Or kick it on the side stand and say thanks to everybody that's involved. So RNG, McCams, ART for giving us the space to have the crash, and you, you absolute nut job for being happy enough to come <laughs> down and fling it down the road. Thanks for holding me hand again, Dad. <laughs> Thanks very much.